So I'm back a little bit sooner than I thought I'd be, and that's because there's been an increasing amount of worry, I guess, or concern about what's going to happen for people that are going to university in September. So I thought I'd best put out a video that, that isn't giving any rights or wrongs or you should do this or you should do that with regards to going to university in September, but certainly some thinking tools, I guess, you know, stuff that might be worth considering if you are in a position where you're trying to decide whether or not it's the right time to enter into higher education yourself. So what I'm going to do with this video is chat through some of those considerations, some which you might have thought of already, some which you might not necessarily have considered or have entered into your head before going on to some top tips of things that you can do now that will put you in the best position. What I want to do also is caveat this, okay? I'm recording this video from the bedroom studio yet again on the 4th of April and we are moving in a fast-paced ever-changing environment when it comes down to all of this stuff so please 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 keep your eye on what's going on in the news media with UCAS and keep up to date with all the developments as they happen because I'm basing this off information I've got now which is subject to constant change at the moment. Okay so if you're thinking of perhaps going to university in September or you're a level three year two student or a year 13 student then things are a bit mad at the moment there's so much going on and so much stuff has changed in the last couple of weeks that you might not necessarily know where to start so I was doing a little bit of reflecting on what I'd possibly think of if I was thinking of entering higher education in September or the things that I might want to consider so the first one and the big one is exam grades the regulator Ofqual produced some guidance for students, parents and teachers yesterday on the 3rd of April. That's available online and that basically set out their plans for exams this year. Now it's likely that students, or it is going to happen, that students are going to be assessed based on things like predicted grades or work they've already submitted. So that's a big consideration if you're thinking of applying to university and you've got these assessment grades as opposed to exam grades, are they ones that are necessarily going to reflect what you believe you can achieve? Because within that guidance as well, there's also the opportunity to take the exams a little bit later on as well when all this is settled down a bit. Now, thinking from personal experience, you know, I wasn't necessarily the best behaved at school and some of the teachers perhaps had a little bit lower expectations of me and what I could achieve for A-level. So I was predicted something like a D, an E and a U. When it came to me sitting those exams, I got two Bs and a C. And if you're in that position, might it be better to hold off and wait until you've taken those exams before entering into higher education and going to a university and based on those grades that you've potentially been predicted or that you receive. So that's the first one. Decide what you're going to do with your exam grades. That's a big consideration. Also, there's huge question marks at the moment with regards to student accommodation. So if you've applied for, say, a university that's 100 miles away and you're entering into student accommodation, are you going to be able to move away? What are the government going to be saying at that point? Have you put money down for student accommodation or are you supposed to be putting down a deposit at the moment without a clear idea of whether or not you are going to be able to, to secure that accommodation, to move away, to enter into that? student halls environment in September so that's a big one too. Also it's likely that all of this won't have gone away by September you know we'll still be fighting the coronavirus and we will still be changing the way that we're interacting with each other for possibly you know many months yet so what are the universities doing with their style of learning if you are paying all of that money for tuition then are you going to be in a situation where actually you're a bit of a guinea pig for a completely new style of online learning that the university hasn't run before. If that's the case, is that something that you're going to be happy with? Is that something that you're going to, to want to engage with? Or will you make a decision perhaps to defer your entry and wait until things have settled down a little bit? Again, completely up to you. Now, the things that I've just spoken about are probably things that sound a little bit negative and certainly might be stumbling blocks when it came to go to university in September. However, there are positives and advantages too. One of the big ones, I think, being in a position where I work for a university and I'm quite close to all this higher education stuff, is that universities are going to want students to come in September. You know, for them as organisations, universities can't work if there's no students in them to teach. So it might well be that actually universities are going to make a concerted effort to draw in more students 
and make the prospect of university as appealing as possible. So in September, it might be actually that universities are making offers to students that they wouldn't necessarily do. It might be that you could enter into these universities with perhaps lower grades than you'd usually get and secure a place on a course at a really, really desirable university, slightly easier than you would do already. Another thing to think about is, OK, if you don't go to university in September, what are you going to do? Um, and, th and this is a real worry, I think, for a lot of students, because we're in a context where millions of people have been furloughed, um, the, the government's covering their wages, and we don't necessarily know how many jobs are going to be available for people uh, come September time. You know, we are, I was listening to the news today, and I'm oh, sorry, I pointed over there because that's where my telly is, and that's what I was listening to it on. Um, yeah, we are in a situation at the moment where there's a huge economic recession happening. So if you don't enter into higher education and enter in that kind of financial support package, I guess, then what are your other alternatives? For some people, the idea of taking a gap year can be absolutely fine and it can be really comfortable and really enriching and you can travel, but it's not the case for everyone. Actually, if you're an 18 year old and you need a year uh, away from education, then how do you support yourself? How do you ensure that you're financially secure during that time? So it's not just a case of going to university or not going to university and what university would be like. It's actually a lot wider consideration of, OK, if I take this year out, then what am I going to do with it? And am I going to be happy and secure during that process? One of the things that you might want to consider are things like higher education in further education, things like foundation degrees or HNCs, um, one year courses that perhaps perhaps aren't the full package of moving away to university, but can be really, really beneficial and really, really useful to do and might well be directly linked to your subject area. So have you looked around the local colleges of further education and seen what higher education offer is available there? Have you looked into foundation degrees or things that you could possibly be studying for a year that would mean you're still learning, would still be useful for you and the university degree you might eventually go on to, but mean that you're not going the whole hog, you are not picking up sticks or, or not as the case may be, depending on government guidance and going to university in very, very uncertain times. So there are lots of options available. The thing is with all of these things, they're just considerations. I can't sit here and say, you should do this and you should do that because I don't know your personal circumstances, your situation, the things that are important to you and what you want out of a degree in a university experience. If you were thinking actually, you know, I'm a mature student and I was going to enter into something to do with the open university, then a lot of that is distance learning anyway. So it's probably not going to be too different but I don't know what it is that you're thinking and feeling only you know that which brings me on to my top tips and the things that I think are really really important we're in a position now where actually you can't get this information from a teacher or a tutor that you bump into at school or college we're all spending our days in rooms in houses and we're not having that engagement now schools colleges universities are all working very very hard to support you through this process however for you to be as equipped with the knowledge as you need to be to make a really informed decision then you're going to have to turn into a bit of a detective you're going to have to do the research yourself you're going to have to find out what universities are saying you're going to have to keep up to date with UCAS you might be ringing university admissions teams you might be looking at what the government's saying about exams this information isn't just going to magically appear in your head. It's going to involve detective work from you, proactivity and a real concerted effort to say, right, I need to take control of what's going on in September and make sure I'm equipped with all of the necessary knowledge to make an effective decision. There's also loads of stuff going on online. You know, most of university outreach teams and things like the UniConnect program are very, very quickly developing online content. So keep an eye out for it and engage because if you've got questions or worries and concerns in your head, then those individuals are going to be the ones that can help support you through that. A lot of them are doing kind of things like virtual open days or virtual applicant days. So invest some time in taking part in those. You know, if you would have turned up to an open day had all this not been going on, then take the time to go to a virtual open day whilst you're sitting in your lounge. And the big one is do what's best for you. You know, people like me can sit here and give you loads of information or advice or tell you you should be doing this or should be doing that. So can parents, family members, friends, but 
it's it's for you right it's it's your future it is an investment both financially and in terms of time and effort going to university and only you know what's going to be best for you when you go to university it's so important that you do something that you love and that you really really engage with so take the time to consider right if I'm entering into higher education and I'm not getting the opportunity to be part of a sports team and run around with everyone, I'm not going to be able to join a society like I otherwise would, maybe not do travel abroad or a placement year. Then is the love for my subject and the knowledge I'm going to develop about something I'm really, really passionate about still going to be worth it? For me, looking back, the answer would have been yes. You know, the learning I did at university was transformative, completely changed the way I approached the world around me. But that's a question for you, not, not for me to answer. So take some time to reflect on that. Now, I realise this has been a bit of a ranty 12 minutes um, because it's something that worries me, not having the information that you need in order to make an informed decision about university in a completely unprecedented time. So I thought I'd take a few minutes just to go through a few bits and bobs and I hope you found it useful. That's it from me for today. So hopefully um, next time I speak to you, it will be a little bit less emotive. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be back to probably research stuff for my next one. I said I'd do a research roundup, so I'll, I'll get on with that. Um, it's Saturday today, so if you watch this in the next couple of days, enjoy your weekend. Um, if it's later on, then enjoy whatever you're doing at the moment. That's it for now.